Hello everyone, Mike Barber here. Remember this program is tape delayed for many reasons, but you will see it still alive and well. Men, women worshiping, men, women listening to the life changing word of God. It'll touch your heart in many ways. The Mike Barber Ministries, this is our church. This is where we live. Enjoy it because you will be blessed. Sing from your heart. Sing with me how great. Because only God is hearing you right now. One on one. And all will see how great. How great you are, Jesus. How great. Your word, the Lord. Is our God. Keep playing. Keep playing this song. Keep Give the Lord some praise in this place, y'all. Glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jesus. Just a minute. Just a minute. I got this one. You got me. Listen to me, guys. Remain standing for just a second. But I got to ask you, how great is your God? How great is your God? We can go to a ball game and go berser just berserk crazy. Yeah, we come to church and we get the two before disease. I ask you again, how great is your God? Glory! Glory, hallelujah! Now! Glory, hallelujah, Lord! Show emotion! Because this is called the game of life. So sing it like you mean it. Here we go, sing it, brother. How great, great is our God. Hallelujah. We gotta give him all the glory hallelujah. right now while we got breath in our lungs. Say hallelujah, Jesus. Say hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. You're worthy, Lord God. Glory to the Lamb of God. You're worthy, Lord God. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Hallelujah. Amen. Can y'all travel? Can y'all travel? Huh? Mario, can you travel? Huh? <laughs> I'd like to get all y'all just travel with me. Amen. Give them a great big hand, all the ones that... Can y'all hear me okay? Because I can't hardly hear me at all. Turn a little bit more. Brother Daniel, all righty, how's that? Is that much better? Amen, amen. Gentlemen, those of you who don't know me, my name is Mike Barber, and uh, been doing this for a good while. Been coming here for a lot, a lot, a lot of years, and faces may change around here that make us have to take a little sabbatical but then here we come back and uh so very 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 honored to be here this evening thank you for your willingness to come out and be with us here great music and so meet me halfway only thing that you can give me the only thing you can give me as an offering is your attention amen, amen. 
and uh, you can pay me really richly with your attention. So I hope you honor, and I know that you will. You honor this place. This is holy ground. Amen. And on holy ground, we don't we don't play. We don't play around. We don't play games. This is God's time, His place. Amen. I've been doing prison ministry. This is my 32nd year of full-time prison ministry. And my, my last six years in the NFL, uh, every one of my all seasons, as soon as my football season was over with, I'd go right into prison somewhere, travel the country. But as far as full-time, I got delivered from pro football 32 years ago. I had to be delivered from it. I was ate up with it, you understand. <laughs> I, I love the game. You know, when you hit somebody and you hear them go, Ugh, that's beautiful music right there now. <laughs> I'm, it doesn't match this music, but that's, that's pretty good music. But uh, anyhow, uh, just kind of giving you a little quick info. You're looking at the most blessed man in the whole world. Look what I get to do. Amen. Check this out. Dope. All I can do is say it and hope that you believe me. But this is the deal that I made with God when I really realized that he had called me to full-time prison ministry. Well, when you get called to ministry, one of your very first thoughts is money. How are you going to pay for it? Because it won't do me no good to pass an offering plate in here. <laughs> Which hand's the marble in? Huh? I mean, look out. If there's any Aggies in here, I'll say it one more time. Which hand is the marble in? If there's any Cowboy fans in here, I'll say it the third time. Which hand? Ah, okay. <laughs> I, I'm, just, I'm just joking, but uh, you know, this is what I told the Lord at the very beginning. I said, Lord, I know this is where you've called me. And so I'm going to prove to you my faithfulness to where you called me. And I told God at the very beginning, I said, Lord, if it's where you called me, it's where I'm going to live. Knowing this is a complete faith ministry. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to run my race. Because you see, for me to go and travel and do churches for offerings, that means I have to give up my biggest day in prison, which is Saturday, to travel to get there. So I said, Lord, I'm going to prove to you how much I trust you, how much I believe in you. And then the second thing I told the Lord I said, Lord, every penny that you send to this ministry, before it goes out anywhere else, I will write a tithe check. Yes, sir. Because you can't outgive God. And for 32 years, no matter how much pressure is on this ministry, how many of y'all understand most months, at the end of the months, there's more month than there is money. But you see, you don't let circumstances shake your faith. That's right, that's right, that's right. You don't allow your atmosphere to be shaken by negative news. That's why my favorite word in the entire vocabulary is the word atmosphere. Why is that? Because, see, you and I have something just alike. I have the ability to change the atmosphere of wherever I walk. Or I have the choice to allow the atmosphere to change me. So, you see, I grabbed a hold of a can-do attitude in the midst of a can't-do atmosphere. And I'm sure you've heard this before, and I have probably said it in here, but it's very strong, and it, and it fits what I'm saying here. You take the letter A, it's the first letter in the alphabet. You take the T's, which is three of those. It's the 20th. 
The letter U is number 21, the letter I is number 9, and D and E is 4 and 5. Go later, go up, add that up. It equals exactly the number 100. So attitude is 100% of your life and my life. And so if I grab a hold of this right attitude, it doesn't matter where I go, I change the atmosphere. That's not being arrogant. I'm just bragging on my daddy God. Because it's not me. I am because of I am. And because of I am, I am. And because of I am, I am here. <laughs> giving God all glory and giving him all honor. So I said, Lord, not doing it. I'm going to stay true to my calling. I might speak in two churches a year, maybe. And I tell that church, I don't want an offering. I'm not here for an offering. I get to be here because I don't want anybody to ever think, to ever think that I'm doing something for the dollar bill. That's just the way that I'm built, and I've lived that way, and I will remain that way. And no matter the pressure, because of my attitude in Christ, in Christ, not of Christ, America knows of Christ. And that's why America today is following methods instead of miracles. Amen. The world today says methods work. You don't have to go to church. You're covered by grace. It doesn't matter what your lifestyle's like. You're covered by grace. That is method teaching. And its destiny is hell. But I serve a God that's never been a day of miracles, but always a God of miracles. He's still in the miracle working business. That's why the Mike Barber Ministries is here. I'm going to ask this only one time. Too many people here are visiting. I will call you out if you don't stop. I didn't come this far, spend this money on this weekend to be disrespected when I'm preaching. While you're here, you respect it. It's your choice whether you don't want to come back. I love you the way you are, but I'm into miracles, not methods. To let you just do whatever you want to do. Yeah, I've already lost some of you. Well, I'm sorry. You just have to get over it. Because I love being here. To God be the glory. Won't take it. Just a great, great deal. I had an incredible pastor that was supposed to be in here tonight, all day tomorrow, Pastor Rex Johnson. Pastor's an amazing church in Austin, Texas. Amen. I don't know of another man on earth that is more of a people's person. Has the ability to just, don't matter who it is. His love for them, his respect, yet preaches a solid, simple word of God and, and pastors a big church and of all things, this just yesterday, the biggest family in his church, that family's mother, decided to go on to heaven. And so he's there with the family and it, well, he couldn't be here. So tonight you're stuck with me. And we've got, it, we've got it covered for the rest of the weekend. Got a great speaker here coming tomorrow. 
and a couple of speakers, and then I'll be back on Saturday with you, my, myself, and uh, so all is good and well. Amen? Amen? This evening, very quickly, if I were to title this, I would say inbounds. Living life in bounds. Now, there's a couple of things right now that every single one of you got to make up your mind. You got to receive the truth according to the Word of God or reject it. But it doesn't matter who we are, we must live life in bounds. I'll be 65 June the 4th. Well, bless God. Hallelujah. Lord of God, <laughs> can't nobody do me like Jesus. <laughs> but all these years, people have tried to get me to do a book. I've always turned it down, said I just can't figure out anybody why somebody would want to write, read a book that I would write. Well, you know, Mike, you can make a lot of money doing that. You're real popular and all that. And I said, well, you know what? That'd be nice, but I'm not into that. If God would have ever really speak to me to do a book, then I would say yes. And that's just happened. And this will be probably the title of the book, Living in Bounds. And that's so easy for me because... It doesn't matter what kind of an athlete anybody is, say a football player, we'll take that sport since I know about that much about it. But I know for a fact it doesn't matter who you are, how fast you are, how big you are, how strong you are, you've got to play the entire game in bounds. Once the ball gets out of bounds, the play's dead. The only chance, the only chance for you to pick up where you left on and go to the next play is you must make the choice to get back in bounds. See, we get out of bounds. And can't nobody put us back in bounds but ourselves. Are you with me? The game must be played in bounds. That's kind of what I want to talk about. Colossians says, if you've been in church at all, you know this scripture. Colossians 2 verse 20. I've been crucified with Christ. Come on, talk to me now. I've been, what did I say? I knew that. I was just seeing if you wasn't paying attention. I am so impressed that you caught that. Excuse me, it's Galatians 2.20. You see, I, okay. Uh, I told you I was getting old. But Galatians 2.20 says, I've been crucified with Christ. Amen? It is. No longer. It is. No longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. Gentlemen, that is living life in bounds. But the question is, have you been crucified? That means you've died to self. The desires of, fl- of, of, of self, wanting to live life the way you want to live it, taking the word of God and twisting it to fit your lifestyle, to fit your language, to fit your actions. Bible says in James, if a man can't bridle his tongue, his religion is false. Either make what? The water what? Good. It's sweet or it's bitter. We're talking about living life in bounds. 
We're not talking about corporate America today where methods work. Some of the greatest, biggest churches, it's overwhelming. The messages that you hear, anything goes. And it's a lie. It's a lie. There are boundaries. Let me have your Bible. Anything out here is out of bounds. Living your life your way, you got a filthy mouth. You got a lustful heart. You lay in your bed and you think nothing but dirty stuff. With all due respect, man with man, woman with woman, that's out of bounds. Take it, twist it all any way you want to, it's out of bounds. According to the new covenant, that's the life we live. That's the rules that we live by. Galatians, Corinthians, Romans. Says it's all out of bounds. Says those who practice such things. Practice, define it, look it up. It means a lifestyle. It means you've chosen that. Living life out of bounds. Man, y'all got quite up in here. But if I've got, I've been crucified with Christ. (laughs) I'm living in bounds. It's no longer I that live, but it's the Christ that lives in me. He lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. A long last narrow way. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus is living life in bounds. And you got to ask yourself. Thank you, sir. You got to ask yourself the question. Mike Barber, are you living life in bounds? To the best of my ability. That man over there, many of y'all know him. He lived locked up most of his life. Drug head, you name it. But he'd been crucified with Christ. You'll hear from him this weekend. I've been around a lot of speakers, but he is as anointed and real and welcome on my platform on any given day. Why? He's been crucified with Christ. It's no longer him that lives, but Christ lives in him. In Corinthians chapter 2, verse 4. Let me just break this chapter down here real quick and then we'll close. Therefore, since God in his mercy, in his mercy, has given us this new way, we never give up. We've been crucified with Christ. Chad, we're not supposed to give up. We're not supposed to give up. Youngs, we're not supposed to give up. Scripture said we're not supposed to give up. Why? We've been crucified with Christ. Hey, we live in a world, real world. Devil will never have a good enough day to give you and me a day off. He's going to hit us and hit us and hit us and hit us and hit us. I've been going through a very serious deal in my life. The devil has been doing everything he can to put me out. But he's a liar. He says, we're supposed to never, ever, ever quit. Why? Because of this new way. Jesus is the Lord of my life. I fell down on my knees at 2 a.m. in the morning years ago. I still hold records today. They tell me. I don't know if I really do do or not. I don't care. But I still hold records today with the orders that slice the titans and the rounds for catching a football. Gentlemen, my greatest catch 
wasn't in front of thousands and millions by TV. My greatest catch is when I fell down on my knees, I stood tall. And I said, Jesus, I'll receive you into my heart. And I made him the Lord of my life. I became crucified. I put my life back in bounds. And I do my best to live my life in bounds. Second script verse, verse says this, we reject all shameful deeds and underhanded methods. I'm not living my life in methods anymore. Oh, it's okay. Do what you want to do. Say what you want to say. Live your life the way you want to. Well, that is your privilege. And you're right. God does love you, but he loves you enough that he put it in writing. He did. He said, we don't try to trick anyone or distort the word of God. See, that's methods right there. It is amazing what I hear on Christian television today. I challenge y'all, next time you hear a preacher on TV preaching against sin, call me. It's just the truth. My phone might ring once or twice a year because of the watered down message that we hear. You know the thing about it? There ain't nothing I'm saying that every single one of you, you don't know is the gospel truth deep down in your heart. Every single one of you do. And I've been fasting a lot, Mario, and I've been saying, God, make me more real. Give me more love for people than ever in my life. Take this anger out of me. Kill that man that he'll never, ever, ever return so that I don't distort the word of God and that I'm not ashamed of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed of anything that I'm saying because I know it is the gospel. You see, I'm hooked on drugs. It's called the gospel. Verse 3 says, if the good news we preach is hidden behind the veil, it is hidden only from people who are perishing. What does that mean? People that are not interested in what I'm saying and they reject the truth. That's what this scripture means. You can grow up in church, you can do all that, but if you're rejecting God's word by your lifestyle, by your actions, that's what that scripture means. And I pray that tonight, this is the night for you. I know there's a lot of strong men of God in here. And I know there's a lot of men of God in here that can out-preach me in a heartbeat. I'm just honored to have a little part. Verse 4 says, Satan, who is the God of this world, he's the God of this world. He's the one that distorts the truth, creates methods. Meaning, live life any way you want to. Any way you want to, it's okay. And see, that's about as much as, how, you know, fear couldn't be more opposite of faith. Methods couldn't be more opposite of miracles. I was raised in that mainline denominational church. Gifts of the Spirit ended with the last apostle. It went out the door. And yet, I had an encounter with the Holy Ghost that changed my life. <laughs> After it wrecked my world for the better, Two weeks later, I walked into a prison for the very first time since my encounter. I can't even put it in words what I felt. I'm in Atlanta, Georgia, in a prison. 
just got through ending speaking. I saw him will and, will and uh, an inmate in in the wheelchair. Officer came up and said, Mr. Barber, there's a gentleman back here. He's been given three weeks to live, hit man for the mafia, been in here for more than 30 years. He'd like to meet you. I'd be honored. Went back there, got down on my knees. He looked like bones were about to protrude out of his skin. How you doing, sir? Honored to meet you. I could tell by his countenance. You see, guys, when you've been crucified with Christ, you don't have to say nothing because people know. By the countenance that there's something different, peculiar, the Word of God says. We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Friendship with the world is an enemy to God. Friendship with methods is an enemy to miracles. I said, I can tell you love Jesus. He said, oh, Mr. Barber, how could a God love something like me? Yet I know he does. To know that he's forgiven me when I've had so many people killed and have killed myself. And to think as bad as all those families have the right to hate my guts, that he loves me and he forgives me as though it never happened. And immediately out of my mouth for the very first time in my life, I said, do you believe Jesus can heal you? Tears coming down his eyes. He said, Jesus can do anything. And I grabbed him by his knee, and all I said was, Jesus, by your stripes, this man is healed from the top of his head to the soles of his feet. That's all I said. I gave him a hug, told him I loved him, praying for you. Let me throw this in real quick. When you've been crucified with Christ, you need to learn this. God doesn't answer to a need. He answers to your faith. Amen. And whatever that is that you're believing for, for an example... Lord, in Jesus' name, give me my freedom. Now, as soon as you've meant that with your heart, from that point forward, all you pray, Lord, thank you for my, for my freedom. Thank you for my freedom. Thank, show him your faith because the Bible says that without faith, it's impossible to please him. Some of y'all friend knew, knew, knew my friend Pete Williams. He got born again. I talked to him, told him. Two life sentences plus 105 years. Anytime they say it, when you're getting out, you tell them any day now. For 10 solid years, every day, any day now. Any day now. In 10 years, he walked out a free man. Any day now. Any day now. Any day now. He's the same God. Amen. I done forgot where I was. What was the story I was telling? Wheelchair. Three weeks later. Thank you. Y'all really listening. And I'm honored. I am really honored. Three weeks later, phone rings. It's the chaplain of that prison. Mr. Barber, yeah, chaplain so-and-so. He's crying. I said, you okay, chaplain? He said, can't put it in words. If you could only see what I'm watching. I said, well, tell me. He said, you know that man in that wheelchair, given three weeks? I said, yeah. He said, I'm literally watching him play full court basketball running up and down the floor.
That day, I got delivered from denomination. I got delivered from religion. Neither one of them will get you to heaven. The only thing that will get you to heaven is you must live in bounds. How do you do that? You get crucified with Christ. In Christ. Are you with me? To God be all glory and all honor. You see, we don't go around preaching about ourselves in verse 5. We preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. It's not about us no more. It's about him and him being crucified. Give me another 15 minutes or so, and I'm done. Is that okay, guys? Give me your best. Give me your best, okay? Give me your best. Verse 6 says, for God who said, how many important, well, I understand what God's saying. We need to listen to what he's saying. For God who said, let there be light in the darkness. You and I were born to be the light. Because we were born to be in his image. So who do you represent? Are you representing the world? Or do you represent him? You guys come in here with your pants so low, what he did, what he did, what he be like. I don't know what he be like, you know what I'm trying to say? <laughs> we preach that Jesus Christ is Lord. We ourselves are your servants for Jesus' sake. The God who said, let there be light in darkness has made this light shine in our hearts so we can know the glory of God. There's many things. But there's one thing that we all must do. We must glorify God. How do you do that? Corinthians says, with our body. That we glorify God. What is it, 1 Corinthians 6.20, I believe it says? We've been bought with a price. We've been bought with a price. The blood of Jesus. We've been bought with a price. God don't care why you're in here. He could give a rip. So you got to understand there's a reason why you're in here. God didn't want you in here, so don't blame him. He wanted you to live out there. According to John 10, 10, he wanted you to have life and life more abundantly on earth as it is in heaven. He wanted you to have life. He did not want you to come to prison. But guess what? In that same scripture, the devil didn't want you to come to prison. This is the last thing he wanted you to do. No, he wanted you to stay out there in the world so he could kill you and send you to hell. Because the majority of you, you wouldn't be in church today if you was outside. You got your thing going on. But you see, Jesus loves you so much that he said, no, devil, you're not going to kill my son. I don't want him to go to prison, but if that's what it takes to get him to come to a chapel, to hear this dude with his ugly-looking lime shirt on, to hear the gospel, so be it. You see, that's how much Jesus loves you. He didn't let the devil. How many of you admit out there, if you're still out there, you might be dead today? Same response, it don't matter what prison I might mention that on. That's how much he loves you. Verse 7 says, we, know, we now have this light shining on in our hearts. <clears throat> let me go on down here to verse 8. We are pressed on every side by troubles. I don't care who we are, we have troubles. I don't care who you are. And a person says they don't have any troubles, they just lied. It's how we handle our problems that we can say by his spirit, I don't have any trouble. Because we walk by faith. I have troubles, but yet by the spirit, I don't. Because I know the game is rigged, we win. Yes. 
So we're oppressed on every side by troubles, but we are not crushed. We're still alive. Amen? Watch that chair, man. I might get you. <laughs> they jump on you like a linebacker coming over the middle. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, but we are not destroyed. When you've done everything to stand, stand. See, you guys know the word, and I know you do. Through suffering, our bodies continue in sh to share in the death of Jesus. You see, we go through problems, and it can be God's way of purifying us, of healing us. Are you with me? Verse 10, 11 says this, yes, we live under constant danger of death because we serve Jesus. Bring it on. Bring it on. I had a confrontation here not long ago. Crazy. Something like that hadn't happened to me in 25 years. Big man grabs his pistol. So help me God. I was telling myself, Jesus, get ready for me. <laughs> Didn't want to. But that dude was mad. And he made me mad. I ain't gonna lie about it. I told you. Devil's not going to give you and me a day off. He's not going to do it. I ain't like maybe these other preachers. I live in the real world and real stuff happens. That young man might have jumped on me and he might have whooped me, but I guarantee you he'll know I've been there. I'm not about this, oh, yes, hallelujah, bless God. <laughs> I get it. I understand. You can be having an awesome day and turn the corner and all hell breaks loose. But James says, count it all joy. Count it all joy. Count it all joy. What? Is there anybody else up there I can talk to? We serve Jesus so that the life of Jesus, check this out now, will be evident. Don't you hate evidence? <laughs> but you know what? We all got to have evidence. It's got to be more than playing beautiful like you do, singing like you do. It's got to be more than president and founder of a pretty good-sized prison ministry. It's got to be a lot more than that. Because there's got to be evidence. Is there evidence? Doesn't matter how great your parents are. Doesn't matter how many times they took you to church. You're a grown man. You're on your own. What evidence, what evidence shines in your body? The evident that you're in the world? Or the evidence that you are in Christ? Amen. I've been crucified with Christ. Therefore, it's no longer I that live, but it's the Christ that lives in me. Yeah. yeah. I got to bring this home. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith. When he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. You see, if you've been in crucified with Christ, then you should preach every minute of your life, but just use words when it's necessary. It's called evidence. Evidence. You know the sad thing about it? 
There's many of you, I can see the countenance on your face. Yeah, Mike Barber, you're judging me. I sure am. I can back it up in Scripture. Psalms 1 is a good one. You'll know them by their fruit. That's all there is to it. But we continue to preach because we have the same kind of faith. When he said, I believed in God, so I spoke. Bless his heart, my incredible son-in-law just two days ago, his 24-year-old brother, they found him dead. A lot of problems. My son-in-law, weeping, literally crawled on the floor. My youngest daughter, weeping for her husband. It was actually a beautiful sight to see the love for your spouse. Two became one. You see. I got him. I said, you listen to me, Andrew. Don't you let the devil put you on a guilt trip. You preach to your brother all the time without saying a word. He saw your lifestyle. He saw your lifestyle, the way that you live. Your words represented him, not the world. And you see, gentlemen, that's who we got to be. But we continue to preach. Preach. You're preaching the world or you're preaching him. I am because of I am. We know that God who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us with Jesus. To God be the glory. Let me close this out. Verse 16 says, that is why we never give up. We don't give up. We don't give up. Why? If we, leave, if we live in bounds, we don't give up. We don't give up. When you have a bad day, find that brother that loves you unconditionally and be honest with him. Say whatever you want to say to him because you know that person's not going to judge you. If you want to cuss, cuss. I'm not recommending that. We live in a real world. Real stuff happens. Amen? This is why we never give up. Though our bodies are, die, are dying, our spirits are being renewed every day. When we live in bound, we're decay, de, decaying on the outside, but on the inside, we're fresh and new. I may be an old man, but on the inside, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Help yourself, brother. Oh, the Lord made me the wrong color. That's all I'm going to say. All you brothers, you can dance, you can sing, us honkies. He knows what I want when I get to heaven. So you, 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 I'm going to just be, right, we're, we're good in here. You, you, you black guys, you, I, I'm just telling you. Y'all got that oil on your skin. You don't age. You don't age. Uh -huh, honkies. Look worse than 10 miles of muddy road. 
Yeah, I know I'm not supposed to be jealous, but I am. I'm still under construction, so just get over it. You understand what I'm saying? Hey, when you live in bounds, life is so fun. I, I, I said the other day, I'm going to just tell you this. I said the other day, see, I don't, I don't mind hanging out with worldly people. I don't. Jesus did. Jesus walking down the road. He sees this dude in a tree. <laughs> hey, because he knows everything. It's like this. Get your short self down here. He's so short, he sued the city for building his butt too close to the sidewalk. You understand what I'm talking about? Hey, all the town people got mad. Look at that guy hanging out with that sinner. Oh. The hate letters that I'm flooded with. How can you go on a death row? How can you stand by, beside somebody when they're being executed after what they've done? See, I don't care what the world thinks. I care for what he thinks. And the whole town people got mad at Jesus. Because he's hanging out with the sinner. What happened? As you know the story, because of Jesus. He had a heart change. And immediately, just like that, evidence came forth. Jesus, if I've cheated anybody, I'll give it all back to him and more. Can't nobody do you like Jesus, guys. Can't nobody do you like Jesus, guys. For our troubles, our, our present troubles are small and won't last very long. Here's my last scripture, and you know it. If you've been in church very long, it's one of my favorite verses of scripture. 2 Corinthians 4, 18. So while we look, not at the things that are seen, But the things that are not seen, for the things that are seen are only temporal. To God be the glory, this is temporal. But things that are not seen is for eternity. You see, guys, living in bounds will teach you to see the unseen. When you're getting out of prison? When you're getting out of prison? Do you see it? Do you see it? While we look, not at the things that are seen, but the things that are not seen. I'm too busy looking at what I can't see that I don't see the temporary. I don't see the now. I've been crucified with Christ. It's not only, not only, it's not only me that lives, but it's the Christ that lives in Gentlemen, my name is Mike Barber, and this has been a public announcement. <laughs> now, be seated. I'm done in five minutes. I got to get out of here. I've got another engagement I got to do. Go ahead and walk right in front of me. It's my show. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Love you too. <laughs>
Hey, real fast. And I asked you, I'm going to ask you to stand in just a second. You're not going to come forward. I'm going to ask you to stand just a minute. But at the same time, I'm going to ask you, please do not stand. If you're not truly ready to be evident for him, if you're not truly ready to stop twisting the tr- scriptures to fit your lifestyle, your way you think, the way you act, this altar call is not for you. This altar call is only for those who's heard a word from God through this dude. And I need to change my life. I need to repent of my sins and ask God to touch me and change me from the inside out. It means I'll start coming to church, quit using excuses. Because you can't grow in the Lord by yourself. You can't grow in the Lord hanging out with methods. Miracles happen in God's house. Everybody say this with me, Heavenly Father. Father, From the bottom of my heart, I boldly confess you. you. And with my heart, I receive you. To be my Lord Lord and my Savior. Savior. In Jesus' name. name. Cleanse me. From the top of my head head. to the soles of my feet. I will be evident. For you you. and only you you. in my walk walk. and in my talk. talk. In Jesus' name, name. amen Amen. and amen. Now, yeah, every head up, every eye looking. Because if you're embarrassed to do it, stay at home. Not quite time yet. If you prayed that prayer and you meant it from the bottom of your heart, I'm not talking about any of these guys in here that you know, that you know, that you know, you're born again, you're a follower of Christ. I don't use the word Christian anymore. I don't know what Christian means in today's world. But I do know what being a follower of Christ means. I'm a follower of Christ. But tonight, I'm in it. I'm going to be that man, a follower of Christ starting to live my life in bounds. If that's you and you meant that prayer, stand to your feet real quick. Anybody? Stand up real quick. God bless you. 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 And you and you and you and you. I want every one of you that are standing to bow your head. About a 60-second prayer, whatever you need to pray at this very moment. God, mark this moment, a Thursday night at 8.15 p.m., 2018. I stood in a minute, and my life is new and real. Keep praying. God be the glory. God be the glory. Ten seconds. God bless you and 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 you. God bless you. Father, we thank you for these that are standing. We give you glory. We give you honor. In your name. And everybody said amen and amen and amen. Gentlemen, God bless you. You're awesome. Stay seated. I don't know how these officers are going to do it. I don't know how they're going to usher you out. We're going to slide out here. I've got another appointment I've got to get to. Love you with all my heart. Got a gentleman tomorrow at 1 o'clock. J. Dan Gum, I believe it. No, it's not him. Who's speaking tomorrow at 1? You are. Let's pray right now. Oh, Lord, help him. He'll be speaking at 1. And then tomorrow night will be a gentleman by the name of J. Dan. He spent quite a few years in prison. Great speaker. Very humorous. And got a great word. 
And then Saturday, I'll be back with you. And uh, our oldest son, our youngest son, uh, was supposed to have graduated from medical school on the 11th. But they backed it up and it's tomorrow. So I'm out of here zipping back to Houston to celebrate his graduation of nine years of college. And turning right back around, getting back here to all my brothers. Love you guys. God bless you. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for watching this awesome program. Remember, it was take delayed, and yet it's so special just to watch. I know you were touched, and we're touched, because the only way this can happen is through our awesome partners that understand where we go. Our congregation, the inmates, can't respond financially, but our partners, they do. They send us even into the least of them. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching, and we'll be back with you very soon once again.